News, the capture of the uh, the inmate and the jailer from Alabama. Let's go to a news conference being held in Evansville right now. Not that I'm aware of. I think it was just a pursuit. They wrecked and they were taken into custody. I understand he surrendered. Were they found with any, any guns or, or? I haven't got that information. I'm not sure. How was she injured? Don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's a result of the wreck or if it's some other kind of injuries. Is there I know, any indication, Sheriff, that one of them shot themselves during this chase? I uh, can't confirm that. Uh, I know that no law enforcement officers fired any shots for sure. Sheriff, the eyes of the country, people across the world, in fact, have been watching and following this manhunt, you know, from here in Lauderdale County and now through three different states. How have you managed to keep going every day and, and keep that energy that we've seen here throughout this search? I just wanted to get them off the street. Uh, I was committed to that. I was committed to every resource we had available to us to use those resources to make this uh, event happen, to make this, this press conference possible. Did you expect this outcome? I'm sorry? Did you expect this outcome? I did. You know, uh, I've always expected this outcome. I knew we would catch them. It was just a matter of time. Uh, what was so challenging about this escape was, you know, most escapes from a county jail especially, uh, they're not planned, they're just sort of spontaneous. Uh, there are no resources available, no plan in place about what am I going to do when I get out of here other than just run. Uh, this, this escape was obviously well planned and, and calculated. Uh, a lot of preparation went into this. They had plenty of resources, had cash, had vehicles, had everything they needed to pull this off. And that's what's made this last week and a half so challenging. You know, we, we were starting from ground zero, and not only that, we were uh, started, uh, they got a six-hour head start on us. So it, it's been a very, and this is this just speaks volumes to the effectiveness and the efficient, uh, uh, efficiency, it speaks volumes to the effectiveness and efficiency of the United States Marshal Service. Uh, this is what they do. They track down fugitives, and today is obvious that they do it well. Is there any reason to believe they had help? No evidence uh, that I know of that there was anyone else involved other than Casey White and Vicki White. Someone going to get some money? So that I don't know about. Uh, that, uh, that's not my, my, it's not my deal. Are they talking yet or keeping quiet? Do they have anything to say once they're in custody? I have no idea. Um, they're obviously in Indiana and I'm here, so I don't really know what's going on as we speak. But uh, Are you all sending folks to Indiana? Do you have people up there? The U.S. Marshals are up there. Uh, we will probably wait until they get back here. I don't see any need in us sending someone up there because they'll be brought back here. Uh, and now if they, if they don't waive extradition and are up there for a while, we may end up sending a team up. Sure, can you talk about lessons learned? We've talked over the week about protocols that are in place for your employees, but will there be changes or lessons that you learned from this entire situation? Well, the lesson that I think I've learned and I think everybody's learned, you don't know who you can trust. You know, I had every bit of trust in Vicki White. Uh, she has been an exemplary employee and what in the world provoked her or prompted her to pull a stunt like this i don't know i don't know if we'll ever know but uh you know i mean you, you as a leader you've got to have people in place in these key positions like she was in that you have confidence in that you have trust in and when they violate that trust i don't know how you can predict that uh, you know we had the policy you know a policy is a piece of paper it can't prevent anything uh, a policy is there for me as a leader to take uh, disciplinary action when a policy is, is violated. I can't predict when someone's going to violate a policy. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, it just uh, I'm, one more time, you know, I've learned that you just don't know people sometimes. You think you do and you really don't know who they are. How would you compare this moment to some of the other events that have happened in your tenure as sheriff? Uh, News conference being held sheriff. in Florence, mm -hmm. Alabama. That is the county sheriff that has been on this case. Now let's go to Evansville, Indiana, uh, where yes, the two Marshall were captured Houston listening in to the news conference and there. Members of the Marshal Task Force from Alabama, Mississippi, and we have uh, Marshal uh, Stillwell here, uh, inspector from the Marshal Service. Uh, they were here because a vehicle had been located in Evansville almost a week ago that appeared to be related to the uh, Alabama escapee and sheriff's office employee that had fled the area. As we were working on this today, uh, we gained information that a vehicle matching the description of a suspect vehicle was near our sheriff's office. 
So the U.S. Marshals Task Force and deputy sheriffs went to the area. Uh, soon thereafter, the male and female fled in a vehicle on Highway 41 northbound, went past Highway 57. As you can see, they turned here on Birch Park Drive. They came through this grassy area. Uh, the, the Marshals Task Force officers intercepted them, actually collided with them to try to end the pursuit. Uh, when this occurred, the female driver of the vehicle shot herself, and the passenger was injured uh, not too seriously. Uh, they've both been taken to local hospitals to be uh, examined uh, for their injuries. Uh, her injuries are very serious. Uh, I don't know the true extent, but I want to commend the Marshals Task Force uh, for being here and, and working diligently with the Vanford County Sheriff's Office to put two bad people uh, and get them off the street. Are these the whites from Alabama? Yes, they are. It is. Yeah. She's still alive? She's still alive. Do His condition? Uh, what's that? His condition? Uh, he seems to be okay. She's in pretty serious shape. Do you know where she was shot? Uh, I don't know where she was shot. But it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Do you know where the pursuit uh, first took place? and where? Uh, it was uh, Highway 41 uh, south of St. George Road is where the pursuit initiated. Any, any, any indication on how long they've been in Evansville? We, we can't clarify that at this time until we speak to him. We know the vehicle that was recovered uh, had a date of May the 3rd. It's hard to believe that they've been here that many days, uh, but we were lucky that we stumbled upon them today. Yeah, the car wash surveillance photos were from the 3rd. Uh, it's only speculation, of course, at this point, but why would people on the run stay in Evansville for six days? Well, they're criminals. Sometimes they do things that are unexplainable. But in this case, I'm glad they did. Yeah. How did what law enforcement? Um, how did law enforcement catch eyes on them? Was somebody calling in, or did law enforcement just catch them? Uh, a member of the Evansville Police Department observed the vehicle and, and thought that it could have matched the description of the vehicle that we've been looking for, and that's where we went to investigate. So the vehicle that's found at the car wash was that impounded? The blue Ford? Yes. Okay. So. They changed vehicles? Yeah, are you guys, I remember the media. I'm they changed vehicles to a Cadillac? Okay. Okay, is anybody here? Was it a Cadillac that w it was eventually stopped in the crash? Uh, no, as you can see, it was this vehicle in the, it looked like a truck, wasn't it? Was it a truck? Oh, it's a Cadillac. Oh, well, I'm sorry, it is a Cadillac. That was stopped. I'm sorry, I didn't even say it. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to come up and speak? Yeah, yeah, it, it was good. We'll, we'll just let the sheriff handle okay. it for now. I know he's planning on doing a press Can stop. you talk about the cooperation between the various law enforcement agencies to get this done? Yeah, well, probably one of the best uh, federal agencies that we work with is the U.S. Marshals Task Force. Uh, they, they do a very good job. They supply a lot of resources and personnel to us. And when we have serious crime that needs to be addressed, uh, we can usually handle it through the Marshals Task Force in our office. And the state police is involved in that, and Nevzal Police as well. So it's a very good multi-member law enforcement agency. From when they responded uh, initially to whenever the crash happened, once again, you're watching live CBS 4 News coverage. This is a news conference in Evansville with the Vandenberg County Sheriff talking about the dramatic end to the search for that escaped inmate and jailer from Alabama. The sheriff just confirming that they were both captured today after a police chase, a chase in which Vicki White, that jailer, who apparently helped Casey White, that inmate, escape, apparently Vicki White, uh, injured herself, obviously tried to take her own life during that chase, shot herself, is in the hospital mm -hmm. in what the, the county sheriff calls very tough shape. Yeah. So, again, this is uh, just a dramatic end to this story. Yeah, this happened just this afternoon. They apparently had been in Evansville for the past several days. They were able to find the truck that was associated with the two, and they're giving all the credit to the U.S. Marshals for tracking these people down. Again, officials say that the vehicle um, that was found in Evansville last week at a yes. car wash was right. used by Vicki White and Casey White. Again, the pair who are not related mm -hmm. have been missing since April 29th. Mm -hmm. And again, Vicki White is accused of helping Casey White escape. Again, taking him for that mental health evaluation that was not scheduled. Um, the uh, investigators saying that the two did have a romantic relationship. Again, these developments are coming even as we speak right now.